Guys, first off, I want to say hello and I want to introduce myself to you. My name is Megan and I'm from good old Tennessee. And guys, a lot of you know me from Facebook and a lot of you have requested that I just spend some time with you. We get to know each other. Guys, you're at my place. This is my kitchen table. I do a lot of work here with the Lord. I spend a lot of time here with God. And over these past couple years, God has just been building something in me. And guys, I don't know what this is going to turn into, but I'm so thankful that God has given me a voice and an opportunity to share what He's been pouring into me. And guys, I don't believe you have to be at a church. I don't believe that you have to be under the sound of a preacher. Guys, I believe that God can meet you in your living room. Guys, God has met me in the most random places. And I'm telling you that I've got a word tonight. And I know that it's for somebody. And I pray that you would begin to open your heart to whatever God is trying to say to you. Because I believe that He is going to be speaking. And guys, the first thing I want to do is we want to pray. Guys, we want to just pray. I want you to begin to pray. And I'm going to pray for you. But I really want you to press into God and say, God, what is this? What, why, why am I here? Why am I watching this old country girl from Tennessee talk on YouTube? I want you to begin to ask yourself those questions as we get into the Word of God, okay? So, Father God, I just thank you, Father. God, I thank you for the anointing. God, I thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. God, I thank you for every woman or man that is going to watch this video. Father God, we give you all the honor, praise, and all the glory. God, I love you. And God, I pray that not one word leave my mouth that's not of you. God, I pray that you would touch my friends. God, I pray that they would experience your presence. God, whether they're in their living room, their bedroom, their car. God, wherever they find themselves watching this, Father, I pray that they would experience you. God, I love you. I'm going to praise you right now for what you're getting ready to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, I want to start off by reading something to y'all. It says, I wish I knew how this would end. How many of you ask yourself that question? I wish I knew how this would end. Maybe it's not about knowing how everything will turn out. Maybe what you really want to know is that you're going to be okay no matter what happens that you are going to be okay no matter how it turns out guys we're going to go to scripture okay we're going to read psalm 63 and i'm going to break it down for you the best i can y'all show me mercy and grace please so guys we're going to go to psalm 63 and we're going to read it together okay it says oh god you are my God. I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there's no water. I've seen you in your sanctuary and I've gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. Come on. I will praise you, God, as long as I live lifting up my hands to you in prayer you satisfy me more than the richest feast i will praise you with songs of joy god i lie awake thinking of you meditating on you through the night because you are my helper god is your helper i sing for joy in the shadow of your wings i cling to you your strong right hand holds me securely guys i was reading this i read was looking up at the top and it said a psalm regarding david regarding a time that david was in a wilderness and guys david can teach us something about a wilderness right so guys a wilderness is an isolated place a place of waiting where God strips away everything and you, my friend, learn to depend on Him. Guys, a wilderness is where God is building you in secret. See here, you won't get human encouragement. There's no spotlight here, guys. Maybe God, listen to me, maybe God has you in a place of isolation, wandering, 
wandering, right, before your promised land. We are going to learn from David. Guys, I love David. You've got to love David. Everybody loves David. And I love him because he wasn't perfect, but he loved the Lord. He was a man after God's own heart. So we're going to learn from David what we do in those times, those wilderness times. First, guys, we're going to go to verse 1. We see David. He says, oh, God, right? And we can't go any further than that. Because right there, David cried out, Oh God, maybe you need to cry out, Oh God. Not, Oh Mama, come on. Not, Oh Preacher. Not, Oh Honey, that old spouse you got. But you need to cry out, Oh God. Guys, he hears you. He hears you. All right, let's go on. Y'all, Oh God. And then David says something that I love that touches my heart he says you are my God verse 1 says oh God you are my God is he your God tonight honey this is personal see not only do you belong to God but David right here says God belongs to you is he your God do you have a relationship with him Guys, I want this whole page to be about relationship. Guys, never about religion. Guys, always about relationship. Are you spending time with Him? Are you getting to know Him? Are you reading the scriptures? Are you praying? Guys, ask yourself, is He mine or is He mama's? Is He mine or is He granddaddy's? Do I know God as mine? That which belongs to me right that's mine that's mine right there guys when I was a little girl I used to always get in trouble guys I used to get in trouble because I was it's mine it's mine it's mine it's mine well David said I don't know about anybody else I don't know what God is to you but tonight he is mine oh God cry out oh God You are my God. God, Father, Papa, whatever you call him, Abba, you are mine. Guys, I want you to let that sink in. I can hear you. I I can hear. I can hear. Megan, I don't feel like he's mine. And guys, I just want to say it's because you're just starting. It's okay. Don't be discouraged. The more you read his word, the more you pray, the more you spend time with him, the more you start hearing his voice, you will realize he's more. He's so much more than a Sunday ritual. He is yours. He is your God. Guys, we got to keep going. Are y'all having fun? David says, oh God, you are my God. And then he says, I earnestly search for you. Guys, I looked up that word, and to earnestly search means I'm sincere about it. I'm genuine. God, I'm looking for you. God, I'm searching for you because I seriously want to find you. My intentions aren't for a blessing or for a better life. God, I'm searching for you. So, guys, here we have David in a wilderness, right? That's what it says, and he's crying out to God. And he's building that personal relationship with God. He says, God, you are my God, right? Guys, I found in life that we are all searching. You might say, Megan, I'm not searching, girl. You might be searching, but I ain't searching. That Don't lie to yourself. Guys, we're all searching for something. And one of the biggest problems that I see is that we don't know what we're looking for. We search for connection. We search to belong. We search for love. We search for careers. We search, we search, we search. And we never can quite find what we're looking for. Because some of us, and I believe David knew his search, was truly for God. Intimacy with God. And guys, we know. We know David, right? He found intimacy He felt the fire before. He felt that longing for connection and human satisfaction, and it got him in trouble. But I believe he also 
knew what could really satisfy him. He knew the search was always for God. Guys, sometimes we lose ourselves. I've been there. We do. I do. And guys, my eyes, our eyes, because we're family now, begin to wander. We begin to search for things that we know won't really satisfy us. Or maybe we don't know. And maybe we find out the hard way. Guys, listen to me. Listen, listen, listen. I've learned sometimes the hard way is the only way. And do not be discouraged. Do not let people condemn you. Do not walk around with shame because you had to learn the hard way. Sometimes the hard way is the way. Don't be discouraged. Guys, maybe the hard way was the only way you were going to cry out, oh God. Maybe the hard way was the only way you were going to know that God was your God. When he showed up in that jail, when he showed up in that abusive relationship, when he healed your heart from that childhood trauma. Oh God, come on. Oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. God, it's dry in this wilderness. It's lonely. God, temptation is here. God, but I will not stop. Somebody say, I will not stop. I will not stop until I find you. Until, God, I experience your presence, I won't stop searching. Guys, get it in your heart that you're going to search no matter what. That you're not going to stop. That you're not going to turn around. If nobody goes with you, nobody goes with you. Baby, go alone. Go alone. If won't nobody go, go alone. So let's keep going, guys. Are y'all having fun? My God, I earnestly, which is to be genuine, sincere, I search for you. Guys, David goes on to say, my soul thirsts for you. Guys, our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. God, I have a strong desire for you. I'm craving you, God. I'm longing for you. I'm yearning. God, I'm thirsty for a touch. Who's thirsty for a touch tonight? Come on. I'm thirsty for your presence. My whole body longs for you. My friend, can you honestly say that you are longing for God, for Him, for not what He can bless you with, not what He can do for you, but for Him? Guys, God can fulfill that thirst, that longing. But you've got to get in position. Remember, you're in a wilderness, and you are the one that is searching. What are you searching for? You still searching for love? You still searching for Him? You still searching for that perfect job? Are you still searching for those things that you think are going to bring you some, make you feel worthy, make you feel like you belong in this world? Searching for leadership, ser- searching for position? Or are you done with all that and say, God, tonight I'm just searching for you? See, because I'm too thirsty. See, I, I, Megan, I'm too thirsty. I'm longing for something that I haven't been able to find. Tell God, God, my whole body, my whole body, my spirit, my person, my soul wants you. Nothing else, just you. Listen, guys, God will take that seat on the throne of your heart. He will. Y'all still with me? Guys, let's keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Let's go. So, oh God, we're crying out, right? You are my God. We've got that relationship down. I'm earnestly searching for you. My soul thirsts for you, God. God, I'm searching for you. I'm searching for you. I've decided that I'm searching for you. My whole body longs for you. In this parched and weary land where there's no water, parched, dried out with heat, intense heat. I see a man sweating, bent over a woman, barely making it. You talk about heat, and that woman right there, she's been through the fire. But how many of you know, come on, come on. If you follow my Facebook, you see the post I made. You've seen the post I made this morning. But how many of you know God has to get you alone and take you through or put you through 
some intense heat for you to see that heat is all that you need. Guys, for you to see that he, he is the one that can help you, that He is the one that can deliver you, that He is the one that can protect you, that He is the one that can bring you out. Say so you've tried everything else to bring you out, but guys, you're in this desert, you're in this wilderness, it's dried up, you've been through the fire, maybe it's a furnace, I don't know what it is, but maybe He has you there for a reason and for a purpose. God, how to get you alone. I know you didn't want to be alone. I know it was your worst fear. I know that you wanted people to go with you. I know that you loved them. I know that you tried so hard, but God had to get you alone. Because if he didn't get you alone, you were never going to spend time with him. You were never going to worship him. You were going to be tending to other people's needs. Come on. And you were going to have good intentions. But God had to get you in a season of isolation. Because he had to heal your heart. And he had to prepare you for your purpose. Because, see, you've got a purpose. Right? Guys, listen. A lot of you are stuck in your wilderness. Just like the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Complaining. I'm going to raise my hand. Complaining. Somebody always told me you can get a lot more out of... You can get a lot more out of praising than you can complaining. And it's true. It's true. So guys, a lot of you are in the wilderness and you're blaming the devil and you're blaming him and you're blaming her. And guys, some of us were blaming the church. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry that the church, yeah. I'm sorry the church was supposed to be your safe place and it wasn't. Guys, but that church is not your God. Remember, he's your God. Remember, He is your God. You've got to forgive Him. you got to move on. you got to come to terms with it. I'm sorry, you do. You just do. We're blaming the church. You're blaming your ex-husband. Listen to this. When it's God who puts you in the wilderness, maybe some of you are blaming God. Listen, you had to be here. If you didn't know you were thirsty, you wouldn't know you needed a drink. It's time to stop blaming, guys. It's time to stop complaining. Yep. Time to stop grumbling. And it's time to start crying out, Oh, God. Oh, God, I need you. Yeah. I don't need another dry relationship. I don't need another man. No. I don't need that anymore. I don't need another counterfeit drink. Somebody preach. No, I'm parched, God, and I know that I need you. That little girl on YouTube told me, I need you. And God, I'm just going to try it out. I don't know if it'll work. Maybe you're like me. You're like, God, I don't know if this will work. But I know that I don't have another choice. I'm so far down. All I can do is look up. God, I need you. Tell God you need him. We're weary. We're weary. And guys, weary means exactly what it sounds like. We're tired. We're just worn out. In the wilderness, we can get weary and exhausted. We see Satan in the wilderness with Jesus. See, Satan likes to come in when you're tired. And guys, spiritual warfare is absolutely real. But David, our guy David, who we love, right? He's going to show us what to do in a wilderness. He already has shown us some. Guys, and we are not going to put our focus on the devil. We sure aren't. You know, guys, I spent years and years and years and years of my life focused on Satan. And I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse for my testimony, for my life, for my calling, for anything that comes out of my mouth to be focused on him. Yes, he's real. Yes, he's real, but I will not spend my life focused on the enemy. I'm not afraid of him. Guys, take authority when you need to take authority, but don't spend all your time and attention and your mental, mental capacity filled with Satan. He has no right. And guys, he ain't getting a response from me. 
because you know what I'm going to do instead? I'm going to put my focus on Jesus, yeah, on his finished work. I'm going to take care of whatever's in front of me. But guys, I'm going to put my focus on Christ. Guys, we got to go to verse 2. So, oh. David says, I have seen you in your sanctuary, and I've gazed upon your power and glory. Guys, see how what David did there? He got his mind off of his needs. And he begins to look back. Yeah, he looks back. Maybe that's what you need to do tonight. Just look back over your shoulder, right? He says, God, I've seen you. God, I've seen you. Have you seen God? Have you seen him work in your life? Can you remember when you seen him? I got a glimpse of you, God. Oh, God, I remember I gazed upon your power and glory. And maybe you haven't seen him. Maybe today is your day. Tonight is your night. David says, I gazed upon you, God. I looked at you. And my eyes were in adoration, God, of you. I gazed upon you. I fixed my focus on you and your power and your glory. And guys, verse 3 says, your unfailing love. Somebody needs to hear that. God's love is unfailing. God's love will not fail you. God is not mad at you. God is not angry at you. He loves you. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. Y'all, I was thinking about David as I was writing this. And in the previous verses, he was like, I'm thirsty. I'm weary. This land is dry. It's parched. There's no water, God. And it doesn't say that God came down and met every one of David's needs. It doesn't say that he satisfied his thirst yet. It doesn't say that he gave him strength. He... He was no longer, it doesn't say he was no longer weary, that he was no longer tired. David said, God, I will praise you thirsty. God, I will praise you tired. God, I will praise you because I've seen you and I've gazed upon you. I will praise you in this fire. I will praise you in this wilderness, this divorce, this betrayal, this brokenness. You know what, God? I'm going to praise you for what you're getting ready to do. And I know, God, that I'm going to praise you for what you've already done. God, but I'm going to praise you, God, because I have faith for what you're going to do again. And I'm going to praise you because I love you. Just because I love you, God, because you're worthy of praise, I'm going to praise you. Guys, Praise God for His unfailing love. Praise God that He never leaves you or abandons you. God, praise God for who He is. He's God. He's King. It hurts here. It's dry. I'm broken. I'm crying. I'm on the floor. My kids aren't talking to me. God, but I'm going to praise you anyways. He don't love me anymore. I don't know. I did everything I thought I should do, but he don't love me anymore. God, I'm going to praise you through this storm. I'm going to praise you, God, because even when they leave and they forsake me, God, you never will. Begin to praise God for his faithfulness. God, thank you that you're faithful. God, even when I'm not faithful, ain't you thankful that God's faithfulness is not dependent upon yours? That we stand before God, holy and blameless, because of the blood of Christ. Verse 4 says, I will praise you as long as I live, lifting my hands to you in prayer. Today, throw your hands up, my friend. Throw your hands up, praise and pray. Come close to God, because He wants to come close to you. And guys, I got to tell you, The password is praise. If you're praising, you're on the way. David learned something. You want to get in the presence of God, you just begin to praise Him. Praise while you wait. Praise while you're thirsty. Praise while you're lost and broken. That's what David did. Ah, guys, and then we got to go to verse 5. Come on. David says, you satisfy me more 
and the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I can feel the relief. David was still, listen guys, listen, this can speak to you. David was still physically in a wilderness. Scripture never says he left. And you might be too. But David found relief. He found an escape. Finally, after David's praising, first he calls on God. He says, God, you are mine. And then he begins to praise God and look back at how faithful God had been. And then finally, he says, you satisfy me. You, God, fulfill me. You quench my thirst. Oh, God, you alone meet my expectations. Guys, stop expecting humans to be what God wants to be for you. You're going to get let down every time. And it's really not right to put that pressure on them. Guys, we got to let humans be humans. And you've got to show people mercy and grace because you need mercy and grace. I know in this world we think we're perfect and everybody else is the problem. But guys, we've got to begin to take an honest look at ourselves. David continued to praise God. He said, God, maybe that's you today, Papa. I'm content. I'm content. Even if it's here in this wilderness, I'm right where I know I'm supposed to be. And God, I know that it hurts, but I know that it serves a purpose. God, I don't know what that purpose is yet, but will you please show me? God, will you please give me the strength? God, would you please just walk with me? I'm content, God, with just you. We see David even in a wilderness. Listen, we see David even in a wilderness searching for God, and he finds him. And you will too. Verse 6, David says, I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night. Verse 7 says, because you are my helper. It's you, God. Somebody say, it's you, God. It took isolation. It took fire. It took heat. It took thirst. It took brokenness. But my wilderness taught me he is my helper that it's always been you god my wilderness my rock bottom taught me that he is my god that he pulled me out of the pit right come on come on and guys david begins to get happy he says i sing for joy in the shadow of your wings i'm singing for joy god not because i'm out because you're with me in it my circumstances God, they seem the same. But something's changed. And I found an escape. And it's the secret place with you. In the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. That's what David says in verse 8. He says, I cling to you. See, in the beginning we see David. He's thirsty. He's weary. He's tired. He's searching. But by the end of this chapter, guys, listen, he's not searching, he's clinging. And guys, it all starts with a search. An earnest, a sincere search for God. And when you find him personally, because that's what it's all about, you will go from searching to clinging just like David. You will hold on tightly and you will not let go. God, I don't know. God, I don't know what the future holds, but I'm holding on to your leg like a scared little child. Guys, listen. Hold on tightly. Find him. Search for him. I don't know you. I don't. A lot of y'all, I don't know y'all. But God does. And God knew that you would be here watching this video right now. And he knew this very moment would be for you. Maybe it starts with an oh God. Like maybe we've identified the season we're in. We're like, yeah, we're probably in the wilderness. But what are you going to do in your wilderness? Are you going to be like the children of Israel? Are you going to walk around remembering how good it was back there, even though back there was slavery? See, sometimes we get we we look back and we see only the good. The children of Israel 
began to look back and remember the food they had, right? Even though they were in slavery, sometimes we look back at a comfortable situation and we think it's better to just go back to the comfortable. But God wants to pull you out of that. Maybe it starts with an, oh God, you are my God. I earnestly search for you. Guys, your wilderness was necessary. Stop complaining. Stop blaming. And start praising and seeking God. And you will find Him. I promise. That's what I wrote, guys. I'm going to take a minute to pray with you. I want to read this scripture again. Let's just read it again. Oh God, oh God, you are my God and I earnestly search for you. My soul thirsts for you. My whole body longs for you in this parched and weary land where there is no water. I've seen you in your sanctuary and gazed upon your power and glory. Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. I will praise you. Come on, somebody. I will praise you as long as I live. My circumstances do not dictate my praise because, God, you are good because you say you are good. And, God, I know that you're turning this situation around. But, God, even if you don't, I'm going to praise you anyways. You satisfy me more than the richest feast. I will praise you with songs of joy. I lie awake thinking of you, meditating on you through the night because you are my helper. I sing for joy in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your strong right hand holds me securely. Father God, I thank you that God, that when we earnestly search for you, God, that you're available. And God, that we can find you. God, I thank you for the wilderness. God, I thank you for isolation. God, I thank you for the dark days, the dark nights. God, I thank you for the valleys. God, just like the mountains. God, I thank you that my friends, God, have found the secret to praise you no matter what. God, I pray that you would strengthen them and comfort them. God, I pray that they would begin to develop intimacy with you. God, I pray, Father, God, that you would get rid of distractions and they would see that you are the most important part of their day. And God, that you are longing to be next to them. You are longing to communicate with them. You are longing to be close to them. And God, that you want to date them. God wants to date you. He does. He wants to spend some quality time with you. He wants you to get to know him. And guys, God is a gentle man. Let me tell you something. Y'all, I love y'all. I pray all this in Jesus' name. I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for spending this 30 minutes with me. Guys, I know it's pretty rough, but guys, I love y'all. And that's it. Peace out.